Hello, this is Prince de Guzman and welcome back to my channel. This is the second episode of True Crime and Wine. You know, there are a lot of true servant of God, but there are also a lot of people in the church who just really love to do bad things. Today, we are going to talk about something very close to my home. We are going to talk about the very first documented serial killer in the Philippines. Ooh. No other than Father Juan Severino Malyari. Yes, people, the very first documented serial killer in the Philippines was a priest. Also, if I can remember correctly, this priest is featured in a book turned into a movie called Smaller and Smaller Circles. Hope you can check that out. So this very interesting. Let's get into it. So Juan Severino Malieri lived in the 1800s. Sadly, we don't have much information about him. We don't know where he graduated, when was his birthday, etc, etc. But we knew that he came from Makabebe, Pampanga. Ooh, shout out to my Kapampangan fans out there. Mayapayaldo! Did I say that right? I think so. And we also knew that he studied at University of Santo Tomas. Ooh, hello to the USC Growling Tigers. We also knew that he was ordained on the year 1809 and served as a coadjutor in Gapan, Lubao, and Bacoor. So a coadjutor is someone who's assisting the diocesan bishop and someday he's going to replace him. He's really trying his best to apply for a position of a parish priest, but sadly he was being rejected. Uh, just an information, during around these times, uh, Philippines is under the Spanish regime. So there's a systemic racism and I think that played a big part. But according to God, dreams do come true if you really prayed for it. He finally got assigned as a parish priest in Magalang, Pampanga, serving from 1816 to 1826. He was also the very first Filipino priest to take over this parish church. According to psychiatrist turned historian Dr. Luciano P. R. Santiago, Juan Severino Malyari had a troubled relationship with his mother. It then became the main reason of his killings. Ooh, looks like a story straight from a horror movie. Mm. So people were saying that during the last few years of his term in this parish, Father Juan is already showing signs of mental illness. So let's talk about his murders. Again, he believed, he strongly believed that his mother is under a curse or kulam. Kulam can be curse or witchcraft in Filipino and the only way to save her is by killing people. There are over 57 mysterious killings in this town. Sadly, these cases remained unsolved because of lack of evidence and motive. I wonder what he did to them. You know, it's just sad that we don't really have much information about his killings because uh, other serial killers, we would know that they chopped the body, put it in a chemical, burned it somewhere. But these 57 people, we don't know where they are. Oh, this is exciting. So if you have any leads about these mysterious unsolved cases of the killings of Father Severino Maliari, Mm, go comment it below. And sometime in 1826, with whatever reason, Father Juan Severino Malyari fell ill, so another priest came in to take care of him. And that's when the priest discovered all these bloodied weapons and lost items that belong to the dead people in the town. So I don't know what's the reaction of that priest. I mean, it's just another day for him to be a good Samaritan. He didn't know it's a good day to discover some evidences for some tragic 57 murders. So Father Malyari was captured and imprisoned by the Spaniards. He stayed in prison for 14 years as these people cannot decide what kind of punishment are we going to do with the servant of God? I mean, really? A priest doing these murders? Hmm, what should we do about him? So during those glorious 
14 years, Father Maliari discovered his passion in calligraphy and even became the second Filipino to master that art next to Father Mariano Hippolito. So the sad part, according to Dr. Santiago, Father Maliari was supposed to be sent at Hospicio de San Juan because it was proven that he is really mentally ill. Apparently, he went through a lot of psychological tests. And yes, it was confirmed. He was suffering from a mental illness. But in 1840, the Spanish authorities decided to put Father Maliari in the death row. And he was executed through hanging. That's just sad. Interesting fact, this also makes Father Maliari the very first Filipino executed by the Spanish authorities 32 years before Gomburza. Gomburza is Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora, the last names of three Filipino priests executed by the Spanish authorities. Again, there are a lot of questions than answers about Father Juan Severino Maliari, especially about his murders. I mean, is he really suffering from a mental illness? Or is it true that his mother is under a curse or kula? Or what if Spaniards are just really jerks and just accuse him and just planted these evidences into his room? There are a lot of questions. Why did it took about 14 years to punish him? So what do you guys think? Is this story familiar to you? If you have any information about the case of Father Juan Severino Maliari, let me know in the comment section. Let's talk about this case. I mean, again, we need much more information. So maybe you have some relatives, especially to my Kapampangan viewers. Let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this episode of True Crime and Wine, and maybe you'll get a chance to be featured on my next video. So again, this is Prince de Guzman. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Prince de Guzman Transformations, and don't forget to hit that bell button so you won't miss my next video. See you on the next episode of True Crime and Wine. <laughs>